Are you ready? Are you ready? Good morning everyone, I'm Tejashi from the Destination Knowledge Center and I will be moderating the session today which is on the Bangalore story. Known as the Silicon Valley and Pub Hub of India, Bangalore is blessed with great weather and great vibes. But to acquaint us with the story of Bangalore that shaped the city to its present avatar, we have with us Mr. Vinay Parmeshwarappa, the founder of Gully Tours, one of India's first experiential tour company that specializes in immersive travel. They offer walking tours, cycle tours, food tours, and a series of bespoke tours in Bangalore, Mysore, Poole, and Kochi in South India. Since 2009, he has hosted more than 30,000 people from 70 plus countries around the world. His guests include Mr. Kofi Annan, Bollywood celebrities, and CEOs of global corporations. He has been featured in Netflix, The Guardian, National Geographic magazine, and Condé Nast Traveler. He was featured as one of the leaders of tomorrow by the Indian media house ET Now. He's an engineer and an MBA from the University of Boston. And we are very, very happy to have him with us today. Hi, Vinay, and welcome. And thank you so much for um, doing the session on the story of Bangalore with us. Uh, it's thank you, Tejashree. That was a very kind introduction. My absolute pleasure to be here. <laughs> Great. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over the floor to you and uh, to tell us about the Bangalore story. Over to you. Great. Thank you, Tiyushri. I'm just seeing we have about 135 people on the call here. And I'm, I'm really curious. Uh, Tiyushri talks to me about the sessions you've been doing. Uh, it's exciting. I would just love to hear where are people logging in from. Could you quickly come on chat and just, just give us a sense in terms of uh, uh, which city are you uh, guys coming in from? I know Soma is in Bhopal and Saurabh is in Delhi and Tejashree is in Bangalore and so am I. Uh, but I, I would just be curious just, just to see where are people coming in from. Delhi, Goa, oh, nice. Uh, Delhi, right? Just to get a sense of uh, where are we, right? I'm seeing, okay, interesting, Varanasi, more Delhi, right, Bengal, Kulu, okay, great, <laughs> nice, oh, Delhi clearly, Madurai, nice, Udaipur, <laughs> Bombay, okay, we have a, oh, okay, Gurgaon, nice, nice, okay, nice, we've got a good, fair uh, mix here from across the country, I'm hoping if anybody from the Northeast is coming in as well, okay. Interesting. Um, great. Uh, I'm guessing most of you here would have uh, been to Bangalore, right? At some point uh, or the other, most of you have been to Bangalore. And I'm sure you have your uh, take uh, on the city. And that's what I'm in interested to hear. Do you want to quickly come in on chat and tell me, if you, if you hear Bangalore, what comes to your mind, right? When somebody says Bangalore, what comes to your mind again? Do you want to uh, uh, quickly? Yeah, uh, just uh, because I'm just really curious to. Under oh wow, Srinagar, that's beautiful. IT hub, of course. Rashmi, IT, yes, technology. Oh, the boiled beans, nice Akriti, right? IT, IT, yes. I'm hearing more technology. Great weather, yeah, that's a good one, Anurag. Thank you. This is a beautiful city for sure. Google, okay. I, I'm guessing you're talking about technology again. Right. Anything else that's, that comes to your mind? Yes, it's busy apart from uh, it being uh, uh, a tech capital. Um, anything else? Anything else that comes to your mind when you think of Bangalore? Right. Red sand. <laughs> nice. Interesting. The Silicon Valley. Okay. Green. Sure. A lot of us growing up in school uh, thought of it as the Garden City. Traffic. Nice. High rise city. Great. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I, I definitely hear. Uh, a lot of technology out there, of course, not for its weather and its green, right? But all of you bang on. I'm somebody who was born and brought up in Bangalore. Uh, till date, I've spent most number of summers of my life in Bangalore. And I, I don't think there's any other big city in the world I would rather live in but Bangalore, right? Um, and I say this for a bunch of reasons. 
and what i would like to share with the bangalore story is uh, my take on the city right and i say it's just not one city there are at least four different and distinctive cities within bangalore right and uh, let's really walk through these four different cities of bangalore are you ready okay let's do this right um what are you seeing here in front of your screen is um, boiled baked beans boiled beans right and somebody i think akriti was talking about it being baked beans i always love how city gets its uh, get, get their names from and for bangalore it goes back about a 500 years where uh, the king of bangalore went hunting and as the story goes that he lost his way on his way back he finds uh, uh, a little hut with an old lady he's famished and she serves him a pot of uh, boiled beans right and so impressed again the story says that he decided to name the city after these beans right bendakaluru which is the city of um, boiled or baked beans so that's how the city gets its uh, origin and this is the man kempe gowda our airport is still named after him um you really seeing in the last 500 years bangalore coming into shape and this is the oldest part of bangalore right and i see the oldest part of bangalore just like how you have old delhi um if you go to jaipur the older part of the city um, exactly this is this is a walled city what you see uh, down here is the fort you still have the fort and the palace and what you see here is a little market so much like delhi right i think pretty much all cities back then um, had this kind of a format where the king and his family lived in the fort here and they extended uh, what was was it was a trading space right and that's exactly how chikpet was uh, chikpet which is the oldest part of bangalore it was imagine uh, this is the fort that you still see still stands on and this is what you're seeing um, in the in the market area all these different south indian sounding names called akki pete bale pete uh, chik pete sultan pete all of it the different different parts of the uh, old city and if you're wondering what does it literally mean akki means rice right that's why you're selling rice and bale means bangle that's why you're selling bangle um, and if you're wondering how does this bifurcation happen it was actually on 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 the caste right and and that's how your professions were uh, decided as well so a lot of it was on um, on caste lines and it's it's still one of the most fascinating parts of bangalore we do a tour there and which i absolutely enjoy um, in chikpet right we look at how chikpet is again busy narrow alleys you see the market lots of flowers lots of fresh flowers you what you see right it's busy all the time uh right not only are you seeing the flowers and, and the busy market there it's also the oldest part of town like you see you see a lot of these gold smiths right working on uh, uh, these beautiful ornaments you're seeing a lot of these old world trade right um being practiced here in chikpet right listen carefully to what you're hearing i'm going to ask you a question i'm going to play this again right all of you here listen carefully to the sound right and i'm going to ask you something about the sound great now do you want to quickly come on chat and tell me what what do you think is happening here what what's 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 that uh, nice <laughs> printing or weaving hand loom sound of a sewing machine interesting print ah weaving loom interesting interesting um good one i clearly see a, i think a bunch of these experienced uh, folks here in travel um you're right right so what you're seeing here is let's go in right let let's go in let's see This is uh, our sari is being made. And we are taking sari and making the sari go roll. And it will slowly do the entire work in the sari. 
whole uh, mechanism, how this whole thing works. Um, so that's the weaver. And this, this is the whole machine where I think you're weaving saris. A uh, couple of things here. If you look at the region from Bangalore to Mysore, it's one of the highest producing uh, silk regions in Asia. Right? And what you also see here is a lot of uh, these saris that are being woven. And these, this goes back centuries, right? Um, just in terms of making saris. But we're still sticking on the saris. Look at it carefully, right? Your sari is being made and you're seeing this little card, this hole. Um, and as it changes, you're seeing uh, how it's uh, playing out with the whole machine, right? Um, with the sari. Um, this is called the Jacquard's machine, right? This is what you think. This is called the Jacquard's machine. Uh, this was invented by a French engineer about 200 years ago. And what this machine really does in textile weaving is you're seeing this little card with holes there. You change those cards and the design on your, on your fabric changes. Right? And that's why this is so phenomenal with the Jacquard machine. It really revolutionized the way textiles are being made. So you really come and just change these uh, cards and you'd see the design of the sari being changed. Now, again, I have a question to you guys. Clearly, if you've known me for a bit, I ask you a lot of questions. This Jacquard's machine inspired something that we use day in and day out today. Any guesses what did this Jacquard's machine inspire? All of us use it day in and day out. And the genesis of this is from the Jacquard's machine. Computer, interesting. Somebody said the computer. Binary, interesting. Cell phone, interesting. Bang on. You, you, you went straight for uh, the right one. Exactly. Uh, the Jacquard machine inspired Charles Babbage, the father of the modern day computer, to apply the same principle in modern day computing, which is nothing but zeros and one. So wherever you have the hole, that's when the needle goes in and it makes a design. So zeros and one, and that, this, this, was, this was the crux of the modern day computer, wherein you give it an input in zeros and ones, and you're getting this output, right? And from there, exactly, whatever you're seeing on your computer, eventually your cell phone, all of it came inspired from this machine, right? The Jacquard's uh, machine this is almost like the precursor to the modern day thinking machine. Um, so today, when you look at Bangalore as being the IT capital of Asia, you'd see what they're doing for a few centuries before that was very closely tied, right? And you have, you have a whole uh, big community of weavers here. Right. Interesting. You're talking about printing. Uh, moving on. This is Chikpad again. Uh, the saris are being made there. And you, you just see rows and rows and uh, rows of these shops just selling silk saris. Uh, just like you, you could go to Chabdi Bazaar and you know, pick up all these fantastic paper and all of it. So th that's how exactly the old city works. And this is still the heart of commerce for Bangalore. Right. And that's what you're seeing. The real estate prices are amongst the highest. Um, and this is. Chickpeg. But moving on from Chickpeg, if I take a step back, uh, if you're looking at these two characters, Hyder and Tipu, I'm sure all of us have come across these two characters um, uh, from our history. Bangalore is a part of the erstwhile Mysore kingdom. Um, it was ruled by the warriors for the longest time. And then in between, the father son come in and they take over um, control of this kingdom. Um, and this is the capital. The capital is not Bangalore. The capital is not in Mysore. It's a place called Shirangapatna in between Bangalore and Mysore, which is an island. And that's where they have the capital. And what the father and son are really famous for is the kind of uh, spirited battles against the British. By then, the British have entered the country for trade. But they're also quickly getting into these battles with the local kings for control. Uh, so Hyder and Tipu go on to fight these four great wars against the British called the anglo mysore Wars. Right? Um, and the first and the second war, in fact, the father and son are victorious. Right. But before I go any further, I have more questions for you guys, right? Um, because clearly most of you are in travel. I'm going to drop a few uh, dates in history. Let me know what comes to your mind. And the first one is 1776, right? Um, any of you want, 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 want to tell me here, um, what does this date signify? 1776, right? Boston Tea Party. Oh, yep, and of course, you've done your homework. Um, it's actually not the Boston Tea Party. This is uh, the American uh, independence, exactly. right? Um, moving on, um, 1799, 
the whole period 1789 1799 uh, what does that signify i'm sure if you have yep and he'll, he'll he'll go for it straight you think here word events right um, any of you want to come in what what, what word event uh, are we talking about this whole period uh, think of european history from 17 uh, uh, 89 to 1799 any anybody here anybody here um uh, exactly the french revolution is what you're saying uh my last one uh, 1815 come on now you, you you guys know the know the drift what's happening foundation of bangalore that was much much earlier 1815 was a great battle in europe for the battle of waterloo right uh why am i talking about these three events and how these three events connect to uh, bangalore in fact the story starts in uh, bengal right in the 1770s you have a massive famine in bengal and the people dying in the millions right uh, this severely affects the tax collecting ability of the east india company so what do they do they go and petition in the parliament saying that until then all the tea that came from india went into godowns in uh, london and from there they decide to like sell it across uh, all their colonies the government to do it because the company was in severe financial distress they appealed to the parliament and they got an act passed called the tea act what does this act do it let the company sell tea directly into any of these colonies right and this this was a massive change because the company could really rake in profits um, and that's when they decided to sell tea in uh, america with high taxes the americans did not like it what happened after that was the boston tea party that's when the americans revolted against uh, the british empire by throwing tea off the coast in boston and that part, that tea we're talking about in the boston tea party was indian tea tea that came from the northeast from the woods of calcutta right and it's a whole cascading effect that you see here um few years later when george washington is victorious um he defeats he the english general lord cornwallis right and lord cornwallis um now uh, having been defeated in america decides to come to india and he fights tipu in the third war in this war tipu is defeated so they take away half his kingdom they take, take away a couple of his sons they ask him to pay a huge royalty um but tipu is still not done right and he reaches out to napoleon for help napoleon comes in here comes into egypt in fact anyway long story short he's unable to come to india because the french revolution he goes back to uh, france but who eventually comes to uh, bangalore is arthur wellesley and he goes on a defeat tip in the battle of 1799 and tipu is not just killed not just defeated but also killed who is arthur wellesley same person who defeats napoleon in the battle of waterloo goes on to become the english prime minister uh, in the 1950s right very very uh, uh, charismatic individual and he fought his earliest battles in life in bangalore and why do i talk about the story because you you really trying to see how it's it's really a connected word even 200 years ago right even now in shiranga patna you would see this whole uh, uh, war monument um but what happens why am i talking about this whole battle in the bangalore story there must be a reason right because all that you see in shiranga patna outside of these the, the palaces etc you see a lot of uh, english graves right Uh, and this was clearly after the war uh, and if you're wondering the war is over and why we still seeing a lot of these english casualties was there any reason yes there was and that reason was the mosquito right malaria uh, the english settlement in shirangapatna which they made their capital uh, kept dwindling because of uh, um, the water there and the mosquitoes and malaria and this is a big problem i think the joke goes that uh, the mighty british uh, empire fell for the tiny mosquitoes so that's when they decided we got to look for places outside of shirangapatna to make their base right they looked at four options uh, from shirangapatna hosur was one chitradurga was one uh, sira was the other and they all little towns bangalore was the fourth and guess what which city did they pick well it was bangalore just think about it for a minute what if it was chitradurga and not bangalore is what the british would have picked we wouldn't be doing the bangalore story today right a uh, lot of these ifs and buts in history so that's what happens uh, remember how we talked about bangalore was just this one small fort and the pet area uh, the british came and they, they set up what is the camp for the cantonment 
So you have the, the, the good old Bangalore here, and then you have the cantonment here, right? This is where you're seeing, you're seeing a lot of these English sounding names like Cleveland Town, you have Miller's Road, you have Residency Road, you have Parade Grounds, and Richmond Road, Richmond Town, all of it, right? I grew up in this part of Bangalore, right? And I had family in uh, the other side of Bangalore, and it was just totally different, right? You're totally, when I say totally different, um, the schools we went to, um, the way we spoke, and I, uh, how our weekends were, right? It was very, very different in terms of the experience that we had growing up here in, 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 in the cantonment side of Bangalore compared to the other, other sides of Bangalore. And I'll talk more about it, right? What is the cantonment? It is a, largely a, a military uh, base, military establishment. You also saw a lot of these churches, great. Um, with, the, um, with the British also came the missionaries. Um, a lot of very interesting characters, like one, Samar Kaban, came to uh, um, India, came to Bangalore, in the early 20s, his uncle had fought the war in Chiranga Patna, and I'm clear, clearly this, 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 this little boy was inspired. He comes to Bangalore, like I said, um, as a young officer, climbs up the ranks and eventually becomes the commissioner of Bangalore. Um, the biggest park in Bangalore, the most beautiful green space, Kaban Park, is named after him. Just like how you have the Lodi Garden up there or the Hyde Park in Delhi. Um, you have this memorabilia everywhere, right? You have uh, his statue in front of the High Court. You have... Uh, uh, roads named after him, you have uh, little areas named after him like Kaban Pet and all of it. Uh, clearly, um, people in Bangalore loved him so much that he put down his papers twice. He resigned from his uh, uh, role of the commissioner of Bangalore twice, uh, citing whatever, um, uh, citing the law where I think he, he thought the law was unfair to the locals. People would protest, right? And he would come back to power. And um, a few years ago, we had these two lovely guests. Of course, they were guests from Sita, uh, who came from this little island called uh, the Isle of Man in England. And all they want to do is just explore everything about Mark Cubbon, right, in Bangalore. And I would wonder why on earth would they want to explore everything about Mark Cubbon for two days. And that's when they told me that Mark Cubbon was from the Isle of Man, right? And he came to India in his early 20s and he never left, never left. Not even once. He never got married and his love clearly was India. And for all the amazing things that he did, uh, he left for England uh, after he retired in the 60s. He, he went by ship and on his way back, he died on the ship near the Suez Canal, right? And eventually, it came to light that all his life savings went into a trust using which his last wish was to build cottages in the Isle of Man called Mysore cottages, right? So this couple had heard of the Mysore cottages, of course, all along their uh, lives, and they were really curious to come into Bangalore. So much so that even the, the governor's house in Bangalore was a building built by Mark Cubbon, with Mark Cubbon's residence in the 1830s. And we were fortunate to uh, uh, get in and do a little tour. We got a private tour of the uh, uh, governor's residence, is what we were able to arrange. Um, and clearly, they were very killed. Killed. And she, she was also carrying a book called From Man to Mysore. Um, I'm sure it makes her a very interesting read. But really seeing all these connections, right? Clearly, a more in, interesting characters who lived in Bangalore, Wilson Churchill, um, late 1890s. Clearly, um, everybody knows the story about how he fell in love in uh, Bangalore. This is him playing polo. Um, clearly, his love life didn't work out in Bangalore. So, what do you do? Took to uh, Drinking his favorite spot, the Bangalore Club, where he would go and drink, just like your the Jim Kanas, the Yacht Club. Every city in India, I'm sure, has these uh, erstwhile colonial clubs um, where these guys uh, went in the evening to have their drinks. And when Churchill left India, left Bangalore, left Bangalore Club, he left with an unsettled bill of rupees 13. Even today, if you go to the Bangalore Club, you could see that. Uh, there's an unsettled bill of rupees 13. That's Churchill here. It's very much in their lobby, uh, prominently displayed, right? So the most famous defaulter in Bangalore club is Winston Churchill. But moving on, what else do you see in containment? Like I said, um, the military bases, the army bases, um, MEG were the oldest regiments in the country. 1780 is when they were set up. Fought a lot of these wars across the world with the British, the Great War. Um, of course, that was the First World War. Um, the, the Opium Wars, clearly a phenomenal regiment. Um, they're known for their contribution to warfare. 
for this weapon that was developed here in MEG called the Bangalore torpedo. This is used widely in the World War One in trench warfare. If you are not into history, if you ever watched the movie Saving Private Ryan, you would see uh, the Bangalore torpedo being used there. He says, "Give me the Bangalores." So clearly, the people in the army um, have other connections to Bangalore. When I'm talking about military men, uh, I, I would also talk about the scientific temper in Bangalore. This is Ronald Ross. He was a military doctor. Um, played tennis in Common Park. Spent a lot of time here. Um, until then, people thought malaria came from bad air. Mal was bad, and area was air. But it was he, with his seminal work, said, "I don't think it was uh, uh, bad air because every time he would uh, finish his drinks in the officers' mess and walk out." Uh, he would see these plates with leftover food on the outside. When it come back in the morning, he would see mist out of collected on these plates and little mosquitoes on it. And he thought there's something these mosquitoes have to do with malaria. And that's when he decided to run this experiment. He caught hold of a local called Hussein Ara. He put him in a mosquito tent and decided to give him two annas for every mosquito bite. Hussein was clearly impressed because nobody in the world is paying you for mosquito bites. And it was through that work he decided he 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 got. He got to discover that it was a female anopheles mosquito that was responsible for malaria, and that's how he produced the vaccine. He got the Nobel for it. The seminal work of that was in uh, Bangalore. Um, what else do you see in the contemporary era? A lot of these uh, Christian missionaries who set up educational institutions, the Baldwin's to Joseph's to the Bishop Cottons. So really seeing the contournement, which is the second city of Bangalore, the first city was the oldest part of Bangalore in Chikpet. Uh, the second city is really the cantonment, which. The military bases, the clubs, the English uh, institutions, the churches—very, very, very, very European, right? And its outlook. Uh, lots of pubs, like I said. Um, if Bangalore is called the pub city, it's thanks to uh, the colonial influence that it had. Take a look. This is an old 1940s uh, restaurant called Koshi's. Um, very much still old school. You go in for a cup of coffee or a beer. On English breakfast, you see uh, so much character in there, right? I've uh, probably been going to Koshi since I was a teenager. It's one of my favorite places in Bangalore to go get a cup of coffee. It's a place I take a lot of a lot of our guests to, and they absolutely enjoy it. Uh, Prem Koshi, who is um, in his second generation, who runs the place, is a delight, right? Again, you see how how. The colonial influence in the city is so strong. I'm seeing a series of these artworks. If you look at Bangalore in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, was this good old Bangalorean, this gentleman, right? The chaps in Bangalore were always polite and pleasant. So was the weather, right? You're seeing these good old houses. Um, again, all goes back to the 40s, 50s. All, all that in in the contourment area. You're seeing Bangalore is famous for its cab race. You're seeing these old movie theaters. Again, all the colonial influence. Look at these good old theaters, which are also uh, places where people went in for uh, having a little uh, dance, right? A lot of these places. Uh, still, you'd find them in Bangalore. Plaza now is the metro station, but you're seeing the stock different from the oldest part of Bangalore, right? But now let's move on to the third side of Bangalore, the third city of Bangalore, right? Which is the third city of Bangalore? If this was the whole. Uh, Uh, the fort and the the Pete area, the oldest part. If this was the cantonment, the second city, the third city really comes in here, right? And uh, that is Baswan Guri. Again, this was in the 1890s because there was a massive attack of plague in the old city. They decided to like develop these areas, plant cities. You're seeing a lot of these traditional influences because that was also under the rule of the Mysore Maharaja. You're seeing a lot of temples. You're seeing, uh, of course, priests and good old Bangalore. Great for a great masala dosa, some fantastic cup of uh, 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 coffee. You can never go wrong there, right? Um, and like I said, it was really Bangalore's a tale of uh, two cities back in the 1900s, right? You had uh, the cantonment, which was the British territory, strictly guarded, and then you had the other side of Bangalore, where right? the traditional side. You really needed a something like a passport to cross from one part of Bangalore to the other. Can you just imagine that? Just imagine that from Old Delhi to Luton, if you had to come in, you pretty much had to be screened. That's exactly how it worked. So when I said uh, that part of Bangalore, the old part of Bangalore was under the Maharaja of Mysore, and of course, Krishna Raja Wadiyar, amongst the Wadiyar kings, uh, quite a visionary. I'm not a fan of blue blood, 
uh, but this is clearly a visionary right from your KRS dam the Mahesh University Mahesh Sandal soap a lot of the great things that you see uh, in Bangalore today was all thanks to his vision in the early 1900s so much so that uh, he was the first uh, chancellor of the Banaras Hindu University right um, now not that he did in just in terms of development right right from your uh, railroad projects to hydroelectric projects to uh, all these fantastic education institutions that you see in in the erstwhile mysore state is all thanks to this maharaja um, ram goa the famous historian um, very nicely says in his book india after gandhi when most maharajas in india were busy chasing wine women and wealth or they're off to europe at a drop of a hat here is one maharaja who who really uh, did so much right for his state and the only other maharaja that he talks about and i agree wholeheartedly as well uh, in terms of uh, the kind of contributions to the state was sajira gaikwa right in the whole erstwhile baroda kingdom if you also see the two financial hot spot in in india today is bangalore right the whole silicon valley and thanks to uh, the foundations laid by the maharaja and bombay and bombay is the erstwhile baroda kingdom so you really seeing the two hot spots um, of economic activity in uh, india is the kind of foundation stones that these kings led uh, bangalore was also the first city in the whole of asia to have electricity this was in the 1890s the first street lamp in the whole of asia was lit here i'm again curious i'm coming back to chan um and if you want to take a guess why on earth would bangalore be the first place in india to have electricity was there a reason behind it why not delhi why not bombay why not i know shanghai singapore why why bangalore dams i hear interesting okay anything else we had dams uh, in other parts of the country as well anybody anything else why the kolar gold mines yes that's right tejasvi um in the 1890s gold was found in uh, kolar part of the erstwhile mysore kingdom maybe a, an r or two from bangalore and back then that was the largest deposit of gold in the whole world right even today it's the second deepest gold mine in the whole world um so what did they do um the king sent his best engineers to niagara why niagara because niagara was the first place on the planet to produce electricity using water that is hydroelectricity and they learned the technology there and they came back here and they set up the first hydroelectric station on the banks of river kaveri in a place called shivana samudra uh, if you think of it more than 130 30 years ago this was a mammoth task the uh, general electric uh, turbine came from uh, london by ship to mangalore and on nine elephant backs it was taken to this place because you didn't have railroads back then and the first electric line went from this particular power station all the way to kolar clearly for the gold gold mines because they want to dig out gold there that is the world's longest transmission line for a good 30 years right and then and the first city to ever get uh, electricity was bangalore in the whole of asia and similarly the story goes on right so through this mammoth um, effort on one hand thanks to the maharaja you are seeing this whole uh the uh, flourishing of uh, educational institutions flourish flourishing of industry and like i said he was truly a visionary right and this goes back to a story where when uh, swami vivekananda wanted to go to chicago for his great speech right in the first world religion congress i'm not wrong uh, he traveled the length and breadth of india raising money because he had to travel um and the maharaja of mysore the warrior gave him a good donation right to travel um like i said he was a visionary so when he went by ship on the same ship was jamshed ji tata right he was going to japan and they had a conversation and it was in that journey that vivekananda impressed upon jamshed ji tata why don't you uh, start an institute of excellence which focuses on science and technology and tata was clearly i think taken in by the idea uh, he look for land and that's when the maharaja of mysore in the early 1900s invited him to bangalore and gave him about 400 acres of land and that's how 
Tata Institute or Indian Institute of Sciences was set up. Even today, it's one of Asia's leading um, research centers for science and technology. So what are you really seeing here? Right? You're seeing uh, electricity come in. That coupled with a lot of great institutions. What do you think this gave rise to? Right? Uh, it really gave rise to a lot of people who were creative, who were thinking different, right? In fact, at around the same time during World War II, Bangalore was also uh, um, the hub for aircraft manufacturing. A lot of it was used in World War II. HAL that we see today, uh, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, was set up in the 1940s in Bangalore, right? So really seeing how technology is not something new to Bangalore. It always had a scientific temper, uh, not just these uh, aircrafts. You went back... Uh, even to Ronald Ross and even before, right? Uh, ISRO, right? Um, the premier space organization, the school I went to was funded by ISRO. Um, again, it was set up in Bangalore. If, it, if you're really looking at uh, the, the 60s, 70s and 80s, a lot of these uh, um, institutions of um, scientific research, be it ISRO, be, be it be, uh, um, HAL, any, a lot of these uh, spaces were set up here in Bangalore. And that's when I draw the parallel here. What happened in California in the 1850s and 60s was because of gold that was found in California. You had an entire gold rush, right? People came in discovering, uh, trying to find gold. That coupled with fantastic institutions, Right, like Stanford and Berkeley and Haas and all of it, right, gave us the whole knowledge economy. Thanks to which you have you have the Silicon Valley um, in California. It is the same story here in Bangalore, right? You had the gold and coal are thanks to which there are a lot of these uh, adventurous people who came in. I have a good friend who's a Marwari Jain from uh, Rajasthan, and his grandfather came to uh, Mysore. In the early 1900s, why right? there was drought in uh, Rajasthan, there was gold found in uh, uh, the erstwhile Mysore state, and he came with his hands empty. And today he's made a fortune. So you, you're seeing a lot of these people come in here, exactly entrepreneurial, and then you have access to uh, knowledge and this whole knowledge economy that you see today, right? If uh, California is the Silicon Valley of the world, Bangalore is the Silicon Valley of Asia. And like I said, a lot of these parallels in history that you see. The one thing that California got that uh, we didn't in Bangalore was the Levi's jeans. The Levi's jeans was made for the mine workers in California, the rugged uh, material. Uh, that's one thing that we didn't get in Bangalore, but pretty much the story is parallel. But really, what I'm, what I'm really getting to is look at how Bangalore changed from the 1940s, right? All the way to the 1990s and beyond. Just, just, just look at this graph. You're just seeing how Bangalore. It's really, it's, 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 it's booming from the 90s. And I think the tech revolution really, really changed. Um, exactly. Because the whole tech revolution that you saw was just starting from the 90s. And what you're seeing here is uh, a picture of Texas Instruments. And why am I talking about Texas Instruments? Texas Instruments were the first multinational company to set foot in India, to set foot in Bangalore in 1988, right? Uh, TI is still a leading silicon chip manufacturer. Take a look at the picture on the left. Um, they're getting the servers on a bullock cart, right? Um, old means new. What did that give rise to the whole service economy, um, the global delivery system, what companies like Infosys and Wipro and Tata Consultancies pioneered in the 80s and 90s, where a lot of the complicated back end work of the world was being solved here in Bangalore, right? And, and they were all started in the 80s. There were all people who came from uh, um, backgrounds but had good education and went out to like, create multi-billion dollar companies, right? You're seeing that whole wave of these tech companies. But what are you seeing in Bangalore today is, is, is the new wave, right? New wave of these young Indian startups. Every startup worth its name, uh, I would say most of them, uh, based themselves in Bangalore, whether it be Dunzo, Ola, Phone pay, big basket, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the series them, I do not know if Delhi has done so, but Bangalore and Bombay has it and we love it. It's like your personal assistant. You want something picked up from your home. He does it. It's, it's almost like your errand. Swiggy, of course, get, get your food at the touch of a button, big basket, get your groceries, 
phone pay all of it right and all these companies of them i think a good one two three four four or five of them are billion dollar corporations all started in bangalore right i don't know if apart from paytm there's been another billion dollar corporation that has been built in the new startup age or maybe zomato as well um, outside of bangalore so uh, that's what the silicon valley really provides right you have a critical mass here of great talent uh, money coming in and the whole ecosystem and and you're seeing magic that happens a few years ago uh, um, i was at this uh, party um, a bunch of these very interesting people from bangalore i met these uh, uh, bunch of american gentlemen right um, who had started a burrito chain in bangalore called california burrito and i was very curious and i asked them uh, what's their story why did they decide to come to india and they said we were 20 something we were uh, in america investment bankers life was great but we need to do more and be like where is the future is either in china or in india and i said we couldn't speak, speak mandarin so we decided to come to india and they set up um, this chain of restaurants that only serves burrito burrito is a mexican snack um, there are more than 20 outlets today in bangalore and i got curious and i asked them do uh, you think indians love burritos and they said well what is a burrito nothing but a roti uh, some sort of chawal and rajma that's exactly what a burrito is it's it's the wrap with the rice and baked beans fascinating so in today today in bangalore you have a whole ecosystem just expats who move into bangalore not to just work with global corporation to really build businesses out here right a lot of these startups are started by non indian founders right and it's fascinating in all these tours that we do the startup tour that's what we get into so that is the fourth city of bangalore right the whole the tech capital the, the, the silicon valley of uh, india and asia right sit back for a moment and think of your day in bangalore any of your visiting um, early in the morning you go to the oldest part of bangalore right the chickpet and the whole flower market and all of it right you you are seeing that side of bangalore um, from then you move on to basunge to get a great south indian breakfast and to see the temples and all of it right that's the second part of bangalore and then you want to come into uh, uh, the british bangalore with the cantonment area and have some great beer right bangalore is known for its uh, uh, drinks have some beer and fish and chips and uh, something continental and something very authentic and end your day uh, looking at these uh, new age tech companies solving amazing problems um, and maybe on a rooftop bar uh, sipping some margarita right this why i said when i'm talking about four cities of uh, bangalore these are the four cities of bangalore they say india lives in the past present and the future i don't think the statement is truer than in any other city in india but bangalore right great so that was me let me stop sharing my screen thanks vinay this is such a great insight into the city of bangalore and you have connected so many parts of the world that I know that I did not know about and how Bangalore played a pivotal role in so many of these events that happen across the globe. Right now, we're going to take questions from everyone, okay. and uh, uh, let's just wait a couple of minutes before we get any questions in. But uh, what a fantastic uh, presentation, Vinay! I have to say, it was so engaging, and thank you, thank everyone you. engaged. I'm sure it was thank so you. interactive and. Uh, Yeah, thanks so much for doing this for us. Thank you, Tejshree. I hope, uh, yeah, people enjoyed it, and yeah, I'll be curious if uh, they have questions. Yes, let's just wait a couple of minutes and see if uh, we get any more, any questions to begin with. You're at present in Bangalore, right, Vinay? Yes, Bangalore? yes, I'm based in Bangalore, so I, I yeah, I, I love the city. Of course, people complain of the traffic, but I think there's a reason why you have so much traffic because people want to be here because it's a great city. Absolutely, I and completely the, agree. Uh, and it's been great for the last year and a half because of the pandemic. Everybody is working from home, so the roads are freer. So yeah. it really reminds me of the Bangalore I grew up in in the 80s and 90s, right? Absolutely, I think the weather is also exactly the same where it's overcast yeah, exactly. most of the time and it's not really raining but drizzling. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's an old world, old old Bangalore kind of feel yeah. right now. I completely exactly. agree. Exactly, I think yeah, the weather is great, and uh, yeah, it's yeah, absolutely, it's a great city. Yeah. Anybody has any questions on Bangalore? Anything at all? Mysore, Erswal, Mysore State, <laughs> South India, India, yeah. but me, anything? 
I mean, I, I'll attempt to answer. Not that I know know any answer. A- anything at all, guys. Come on, let's let's make this a little engaging, right? If you decide to spend an hour, ask me a few questions, and I'll be happy to answer. Or at least know that you've heard through, even in your pajamas, you've heard through <laughs> what I spoke. Hi, Vinay. How are you? Uh, sorry, there's one, right? Is she? Should we take? That's lovely, Vinay. Oh, hi, lovely. Hi, Good. hi! Thank you for joining us today, Vinay. I thought I'll set the ball rolling with questions. People are hesitating. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. So, when you're jumping from uh, colonial part of Bangalore to the modern to the ancient old, how do you manage traffic? Oh, I, it can Bangalore only come from somebody like known, you. Right? Logistics is a big challenge, right? Uh, yes. Actually, this is a great question and. We start the story at 5 a.m. Uh, Tejshree, so we get to the oldest part of Bangalore, and then we take the metro to. Uh, we just get there in like 10 minutes to the second part of Bangalore. Uh, the traffic still is not built up, and by the time we get from that part of Bangalore to the colonial Bangalore, the peaker traffic is gone. So we can drive in here. So yeah, so if you just you're 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 very right because you could really spend a few hours in Bangalore traffic, and uh, that that becomes the experience. So thanks to metro, right. I always tell people that I love coming to Delhi because I know where my tax money is going, right? And Delhi infrastructure, right? But we also have got, I think, the metro going now in Bangalore. So it makes a big difference. And what also people enjoy in this tour is this different modes of transportation. There, we are taking a rick in one in one stretch, and we are taking the metro in the other, and we are in a cab in the other, right? You are also really getting a great feel of uh, the city. Right? For a lot of your guests, you have done that. they should start a helicopter taxi <laughs> yeah hopefully 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 so right but anyway you 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 could you you come to bangalore often in my sense i think you have questions now tejashree so vinay i just wanted to say thank you uh for joining us today it was thank you very very, very thank you very much for the opportunity take care okay vinay so we have a question from akriti and uh, she asks it's she says it's such an interesting session she would like to ask which is your favorite place in karnataka apart from bangalore apart from bangalore oh i think it's a very good, very good question a very good question i have a soft corner for mysore just because i've spent some time there and the city that's grown on me right i definitely have a soft because i think mysore is so much of the old world charm so much of the old world charm right um i enjoy that but there's so many places hampi is fantastic because it transports into a different time um i love the western ghats you know, the coffee estates the the biodiversity is just absolutely amazing right so i've enjoyed that um yeah very hard to maybe just pick one place but i think it's the great mixture that we uh, end up having here right basically whether we could be in a big city like bangalore you you go into mysore to get a bit of the old world charm the heritage or you go into the greens of the western ghats um, go into coffee country or go further up to hampi so i think the kind of varieties that we have is uh, is, is is great right so i think maybe i i i i love a bit of everything that's what i love and i love i love great yeah, stuff that's how i think karnataka also has this tagline of one state many worlds because you practically get to see everything yeah. in one place like talk very, about very the wildlife big cities exactly. culture heritage everything is kind of encompassed into this one region which is really just and i agree with you i don't think i could also pick a place in in karnataka which i would say is my favorite apart from bangalore yeah yeah exactly uh, i think yeah right from going to a beach to yeah yeah definitely. absolutely absolutely uh so uh, the next question is from uh, farooq um he asks as per you which are the top 5 um, uh must see places in bangalore for a first time traveler this is a very good question farooq you're talking about um i'll put it this way i think you experience bangalore in a, in, a, in a few different ways right so one of them is definitely in the old part of bangalore it's a very little known side of bangalore but it's very interesting side of bangalore as it could be the weaving and all the old world charm that's definitely one side of bangalore that you should experience um outside that i would say you should really experience the 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 food culture of bangalore right it's the heart of excuse me in my opinion great south indian food right uh i'm sure people here from madurai and uh, chennai will take offense but i really do feel um, we have a much wider choice and again it's historical right when i say historical 
it goes back to the udupi temple because you see a lot of these vegetarian dishes coming vegetarian restaurants calling themselves udupi hotel and why because the sect of brahmins who pray in the udupi temple are the madhava brahmins and how they please the god is by making 24 dishes every day and they have to be different dishes every day and that's how you have a fantastic in a wide variety of dishes called the tindi culture right tindi is a snack so it, it, it's also historic right i mean if you just see if you go to chennai and see the variety of dosas and if you look at the variety of dosas in bangalore much wider right so i think the food in bangalore is definitely something you should um, enjoy i think that's the side of bangalore you should, should definitely uh, get a peek into the the tech world right and, I, and when i say the tech world um, it's it's fascinating when i say fascinating you know i mean the number of people i met like koreans and chinese and people of british uh, american in their 20s right they come in here and they trying to solve problems for india like the burrito guy right? why why on earth would a american want to come and start a company here right why because this this is the opportunity and the thinking is so refreshing and it's it's a fascinating world right and it's also a very optimistic world it's also it's very very new age india right very very new age india the way they're looking at things and the way they're trying to solve it's fascinating right i think that that's a uh, space you have definitely have to get a peek into uh, of course it's it's, it's a little closed I mean, if you know people then i think you get into this whole co-working and the co-living and all of it right it's definitely new age and i would definitely say you, you should get a taste of the the pop culture in bangalore right um, we're we're not the pop city of uh, india so yeah i would i would say yeah these these bits that you dip into Yeah, absolutely i think i'm i'm in complete agreement with you and i think these are some aspects of bangalore which you will not find in any other city uh, in the country uh, right moving on harpreet has a question and he asks um, there are beautiful handicrafts in mysore wood craft wood craft paintings toys sculptures and so on uh, similarly bangalore also has much to offer is there an is there an artist village or workshop where one can buy or experience all this under one roof in bangalore itself if they have this for time a great question uh, harpreet i i don't think of or i don't know of any place under one roof where you can really experience all of it but what i do know you have these little little pockets like the whole weaving pocket that you could go in and you can plug in um which is great you also have the whole the whole block printing experience which is fascinating that you can plug in you also have a whole series of potters very interesting you can go and plug in so they're all old communities and you can go and plug into those communities and they're very welcoming and it's a very interesting experience right we could do that but under one roof no maybe it's also because this is not a tourist hub so maybe there's no there hasn't been a need for it to come under one roof but you definitely can um, experience uh, uh, these in pockets sure um the next question is from um Pratik and he asks how are people from different culture or different parts of india and countries who have come and settled in bangalore affected the city overall in your perspective and uh, do you think there are positives and negatives to it and what would you say are the two sides of well, i think it's a great question right and i think it's so much representative of india as well um like for example if you look at delhi so much of delhi is uh, waves of migration whether it's the punjabis who came during the partition or the biharis who came uh, i mean i'm not using any of these terms uh, loosely but people from bihar or no the ones from up so they all came in the waves so you look at calcutta i think you know the, the you've seen waves of migration beat the marwadis who came from rajasthan in the early 1900s to calcutta and set up businesses or even the the uh, refugees who came in right uh, so every city has its waves so if you look at bangalore uh, also has has had waves uh, one of the earliest waves of uh, immigration in bangalore was again the 1800s when the british set up base here they got a lot of these uh, Tamilian Brahmins from Chennai to get into posts in the government, right? So you've seen a whole wave of the Ayer Iyengar wave into Bangalore. Uh, very interesting, and you see that in 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 music, you see that in in culture, you've seen that. Um, uh, thanks to uh, nationalized industries like HAL and BHAL and a bunch of these, you've seen uh, again a global footprint of people who. Uh, come in here but most importantly with the with the tech wave you've seen people largely from the north come in uh, also different parts of uh, uh, south india uh, it's also a double edged sword right i 
I am of a firm believer that uh, uh, a city with more immigrants, be it Bombay, be it San Francisco, is always good because the immigrant gene makes you work harder, right? Uh, and and that's what really makes a city. But I would also say, I think, look at a lot of old Bangaloreans; they're a little disheartened. When I say little disheartened, the culture changes because the culture of a Bangalorean is a very soft-spoken, a very accommodating, and a very uh, what do i say a gentle being right and i'm not saying this as a good or a bad these are cultures right but not, and 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 why there are again historical reasons right we had stable kingdoms we had a long coastline so if you to do business you had to be more kind right or more polite and do business but on not on the other hand uh, you were always invaded by armies right for centuries just for you to like stay put you had to be aggressive so the culture there is a little more aggressive so what people in bangalore find here yeah, there is a little more of aggression and people a little more loud so i do see some old bangaloreans you know talk about saying you know i wish people are not that loud but there are you know cultural tidbits right but at the end of it we enjoy our charts we enjoy great north indian food we enjoy chinese right i mean i think if you look at our plates and i think we clearly enjoy the diversity right and of course yeah that that's what that's what i i i and i think that that kind of sums up uh, there there are, there are questions where the undertones are basically what is the difference between old bangalore and new bangalore and this kind of really sums it up and this is the difference between the old bangalore and the new bangalore yes, definitely. Course, uh, considering the boom that bangalore has had over the past few years it's been quite also in realistic terms just adding to that the issue what i think what the new wave immigration also done is really pushed up costs costs yeah. of rentals real estate etc 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 for the good old for any city right like the good old bangalorean uh, yeah i mean you, you can go to these fancy pubs but then yeah you can go to these you know the 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 pubs and uh, yeah, yeah exactly yeah and you know these these uh, um, artisan coffee shops and uh, uh, molecular gastronomy and all of that right but it comes at a price and uh, yeah for a lot of them Like we go to like old parts. We just did a tour in Malaysia from recently, and it's such a fantastic and an old part of Bangalore, right? We, it was a live virtual tour, and I got a call yesterday from a man in his seventies, uh, and he said, "You know, I mean, I, I work for HAL, and I'm I'm a Bengali, and I came to Bangalore in the seventies. I lived in Malaysia, and I have such fond memories of Malaysia because it was such a welcoming place for me as a." no bengali right and i couldn't attend your uh, walk and can you share me a link if there's a recording and i'd love to relive that i think that i think that that's a i, I thought it was a great way of uh, how the city yeah of yeah. it absolutely absolutely uh okay so i'm going to take another question and then we'll close the session but uh, um or or we'll see if we can take a few more questions and if you're okay with it then we'll yeah fit in a few more Let me just quickly have a look. Mm. Okay, this is interesting. Um, Bangalore has been on top of the list, and this is a question from Avinash, and he asks: Bangalore has been on top of the list of for people to prefer work to, uh, for a city where people would like to work out of. Um, has the growth in the corporate world in and around Bangalore? do you think it has changed bangalore's charm and again i think this kind of sums up what you've said but do you want to kind of talk a little bit more about how it has changed it like how the corporate culture has you know changed the city of bangalore um uh, for sure i think it's definitely seen a, a huge influx of uh, the knowledge worker right which is i think also gone on to give itself an identity if i take a look, step back and if you think of it Say somebody in their early twenties wants to be a movie star. You send them to Bombay. You want to be a politician of worth. You send them to Delhi. Maybe you want to do something that starts in technology. You come to Bangalore. So I think what this uh, uh, I would say more than the corporate culture. I would say what the the, the tech wave has done has like in a lot of interesting ways. Uh, tech as an industry is also challenged. So I think we look at. tech it's less about hierarchies it's more about having a flat organization it's more about contesting beliefs and thinking and it's all about new ideas and etc right it's very experimentative 
uh, in technology. You, know, you could be working in a tech company, you can question your whatever, VP or a CEO, etc. The culture is very open, and people really you know what I have seen with my uh, experience, how they look at time, etc., etc. Is, is the culture there is very different, right? Rather than I'm saying good or bad, uh, and I think that has definitely has has spillover effect on the city. And I'll give you an example. When Swiggy started in Bangalore in 2016, uh, and of course, you know, as a city and how it consumed, Kota Mangla, which is a part of Bangalore, did more business for them than a few other cities in India. Right. So, what does it mean? It's that that culture has had a spillover effect. And why do you feel there's so many more startups here? Because you also have people who are willing to try new things. Right. It's a very experimentative crowd, right? Just like how, like theater, people in Bombay are so much more open to new art forms, right? Uh, or like a JNU, you will have political debates, but you will not have political debates in a college in Bangalore, right? So I think for that question, I think that that culture from technology has had a spillover effect on the city, and people are a lot more willing to try new things. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's it's very very interesting. Thank you. So, uh, talking about the startup culture, also, when there's a question um, that Syed is asking, if you know of any special privileges that are being given out by the Prime Minister government? Yes, I think that was Syed's first question. I want to look at that as well. Um, yes, uh, Syed. In fact, uh, a lot of them. If you just look at from the 1970s, if you see why Infosys were proliferated, Azim Premji is from Bombay, right? Uh, why a lot of them happened is. Uh, Is because they got tax holidays, right? In uh, being uh, set up here as uh, special economic zones, etc. ITP was set up, so that that is one. So you, they they got allotted a lot of land. If you look at the massive campus that Infosys has in Mysore, one of the largest corporate co- campuses in the world. So of course, I think uh, a lot of benefits that these uh, these um, um, companies are given from the 80s and 90s. And what I've seen uh, 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 right now, the last uh, let's say about five odd years. Is of course emphasis on startups. Like NASCOM has a big base in India, uh, based in Bangalore, and I have known how the government of Karnataka um, helps support the ecosystem. Well, so if you have an idea, you can go and they'll incubate and all of it, right? Uh, like I'll give you an example. This is a few years ago. The tourism minister of Karnataka was Mr. Priyank Kargi, who is Malikarjun Kargi's son. The leader of opposition in Rajya Sabha. He had a tweet saying that we are looking at doing some activities with Dasra. Anybody has any ideas? Blah 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 blah. Can anybody reach out to me? This is on Twitter, and I am on Twitter. On Friday, I sent him a tweet. There was a link saying, "Hey, Minister, this is what we do. Happy to talk." Uh, Saturday, I got a call from MD of Tourism saying that the minister loves the idea. Can you send a proposal? And I thought, well, you know, the government send a proposal, yeah. whatever. I'm not joking. This is reality. Sunday, I sent a proposal. Monday, we signed off, and two weeks later, we delivered, and we had our payment. And I said, you know, I, you work with top corporations, and you know, I, I, yeah. So I think I mean I didn't know anybody. I didn't. We, it was a tweet by Priyank Kargi, right? So yeah, I mean, it's nice, right? Yeah, right. that's good. That's great. Right. So um, when I'm going to leave you with two questions, one I think we didn't touch too much upon the parks of Bangalore, and typically in a standard sightseeing of Bangalore, we do have the Lal, uh, you know, the Lal Bagh as included as part of the uh, experience. Can you tell us a little bit more about Lal Bagh and Kapun Park, maybe, and tell us why, if for a first timer who's coming to Bangalore, these would be interesting places to visit? How historically is it uh, connected? And yeah, yeah. De- definitely. I would say uh, Kavan Park is more in terms of leisure. Just I think uh, in terms of a green lung space in Bangalore, and I think it's just great to just go in and soak in uh, the whole. Uh, um, I would say charm of Kavan Park, and of course you have historical significance, whether it could be Mark Kavan and his statue, his contributions to the city, or um, um, the whole. Uh, 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 you have. Uh, These fantastic bandstands, all of it, and like I said, very European in its feel, right? So I think you should definitely. It's like if you're in Delhi, you take a walk in the Lodi Garden, right? Um, whatever, no, you might see uh, whatever back in the day you could have seen Kushan Singh or etc. etc. Right? Back in the day. So uh, I think that that's one uh, uh, 
part of Kavan Park, which definitely go walk in and experience, no doubt about it. The other in terms of Lal Bag, I would say is uh, just set up by Hyder and Tipu. And if you look at uh, a lot of these Muslim kings, they have a great uh, um, feel, a great passion for the green, like just like the Mughal Garden. So they've really got um, plants from across, right, from Afghanistan to whatever seas, right. They're the ones, the father son, who are instrumental in getting uh, silk from China. So Lal Bag is interesting. Not just for that, but also I think when the British took over, they just enhanced that, right? People who were really in charge of Lal, Lal Bagh were people from the Kew Gardens, right? So you're seeing this fascinating uh, uh, variety just in terms of the green, right? To give you a little example, potatoes are not native to India. Potatoes are native to South America. But the British were so used to having them for their troop, but they came to India, there were no potatoes. The first batch of potatoes from South America came to Bangalore, came to Lalba. And that's when they ran their experiments. And they say, you know what, works great. And then potatoes. So today your alu in your alu samosa comes from Lalba, right? From the experiments there. So I think that's why Lalba for me is fascinating, right? Um, and I think there's so many. I mean, I can go on. There's a there's a there's a fascinating Christmas tree in Lalba. Uh, Christmas trees again are native to, if I'm not wrong, Pap it's one of the islands in Australia, Papua New Guinea, if I'm not wrong. From Papua New Guinea, it went to the Kew Garden, and and from Kew Garden it came to Lalba. Right? So I mean that's probably the world's most travelled Christmas tree. Right? <laughs> it's 140. So I think there's so many such fascinating aspects of uh, Lalba, which I yeah yeah I mean I, I can go on and on. But yeah I I agree with Kavan Park and Lalba. Sorry if I must have missed this out in, uh, because of time. Yeah for sure. Yeah. My second question to you, I think, and the final question for the day because we are out of time. Uh, is do you recommend any movies or books uh, that people could read or watch, which is based in Bangalore or you know um, gives you a feel of the city of Bangalore? I would highly recommend this book. It's called Ask You. Uh, it's by T J S George. It's a fascinating short read on Bangalore. Absolutely enjoy it. I think this is a great book on Bangalore. Uh, there's so many more. I'm just going yeah. back. Here. Um, this is a very interesting book. That came out recently. This is Discovering Bengaluru. Intact, pull it out. Some very interesting walks on Bangalore. Um, if you also looking at Bangalore, uh, I would um, a lot of the Paul Colaco, right? Um, he's a um, artist in Bangalore. Um, he's yeah got a bunch of very interesting coffee table books on Bangalore with. Um, Peter Colaco and I forget the other name. The, he, the, the lot of the couple of the cartoons that you saw in the presentation are by him. He's a lovely man. Right? Um, he's got a yeah. fantastic take on the city. So I think yeah, that's that's yeah. worthwhile. So yeah, I think I, I would say I would say yeah, these are yeah. some of the books that I would recommend. Yeah. And I'm sure there are a lot more in Canada, which I'm not that well versed with. But yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Vinay. Thanks again so much for being uh, here with us today and taking us to the city of Bangalore. And you've touched upon so many aspects. And I think it's not just the city which is cosmopolitan, but has so many connections from the past, uh, which has shaped the city. And it's great to know these stories. Thank you so much for sharing uh, sharing these stories with us. Uh, I'd, I'd also like to thank the audience for being part of the session. And thank you for your questions. Uh, Vinay, we hope to have you again back with us soon for another session, maybe uh, on a, another city or, you know, deep diving into Bangalore. But yeah, we should definitely do this again. Um, and we hope to see you back again soon. Definitely. Like thanks, Deshi. It was an absolute pleasure uh, being on this. And thanks for having me. And I hope people enjoyed it. And I see a lot more questions. I'm, I'm happy to take questions. You can send me an email. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'll, I'll yeah. do that. I'll Thank do you that. Very much. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Take care now. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, this helps us do better in terms of the technical bit. Uh, and we'll see you next Wednesday with another exciting webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Thanks, Saurabh. I'm going to log out now. <laughs>